For those of you that are new to Trade Out Loud, my name is Danka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest. And also, we put our money where our mouth is, and we also show you how it is done. All right, so let's move forward a little bit from this. Doo -doo -doo. All right, some rules. All right, these are today's rules. No questions in the first hour. Uh, my focus is trading. My primary goal is to make money. And I'm going to be sharing my trades. Uh, I will be allocating plenty of time towards the end of the presentation where I will take all your questions. Uh, small accounts can participate in any trade setup by position sizing, and this is valid for large accounts as well. Uh, using micros, a small account is considered under $50,000. Position sizing is key and mandatory for consistent trading. For futures, day trading 1% is more than plenty. That is 1% of your account size per trade. Depending on price action, we will trade the entire position or scale partial uh, profits into target depending on the market environment. If it's a choppy market environment and if we see that the price action is, is having a really hard time following through, then partial profits into targets are in place. Here's an example of how we will be calling the trades in the trading room. For example, if we want to take NASDAQ long, we're going to put in the numbers. Typically, I put in the last three digits. So you're going to see NASDAQ long 953 by 905. The first number represents the entry. Buy is the stop. So entry and stop. So first, you're going to have the symbol, the direction. Then you're going to have the entry price, then the stop price. And for shorts, the other way around. So you're going to have the entry price and the stop price here. So it's again, uh, uh, traders using micros use at least two to five points above or below the cold price. Why? Because the micros are 10 times more volatile than the full size contract and therefore you need to give plenty, plenty of room. So for example, if I call NASDAQ at 953, if you're trading micros, you're gonna add two to five points depending on the volatility. So all parameters of the trades will be called and full size. I'm not trading micros, so I trade full size, so everything is gonna be called in full size. What to expect? In a few moments, we're gonna begin with the pre-market game plan, uh, and we're gonna be, go over the major indices. We're gonna take a look at oil, gold, bonds, VIX, to determine the market context and the market environment. We're gonna go over news um, and the potential impact on news in the power hour. We're going to go briefly through some earnings and see if we have some power players that are going to be impacting today's session. And then we're going to wait uh, to identify trading opportunities. If we have a setup, we're going to have a trade, no setup, no trades. Very simple. This, these are my rules. This, this is my trading plan. This is how I trade. Identifying high odds trades, waiting for the trade setup. The trade will be identified probably two to five minutes before the trigger. So there's no excuses. Everybody has time to get in. If you're here on the open house, just watch it. This is for you only for entertainment purpose only. Determining the parameters of the trade will be also uh, established with the entry, the stop and targets. And uh, more so, I'm doing something that nobody else does in the industry. And I mean, nobody does it in the industry. I'm not going to let you hang in. And I'm going to do the live management for you on the mic because I'm doing my own management on the trade because I do trade. And uh, I'm going to be doing it out loud. And at the end, we're going to do a recap of the session. Uh, yesterday uh, literally was an outpour to show you how, uh, you know, to enter trades. Uh, this is not part of the trading room objective. This is to show you how I trade. Uh, I'm not going to be sharing my monitors. I have four active traders on my monitors, and I'm not going to toggle back and forth to show you where I'm placing the trade because I am I have done it before, right at the beginning of the trading room, and I was, miss, uh, uh, I was missing trades. I was just all over the place, so therefore you're going to see the screen just like you saw it last, uh, last week. Uh, I'm sorry, yesterday. 
uh, we're trading in an option expiration week, week, which means that the price action is going to be extremely volatile. The price is going to have violent moves. Therefore, the stops are going to be wider. So position sizing is mandatory. You don't know how to position size. Don't trade. Just watch. Unpredictably, an unpredictability of price direction. You're always going to see a move up, down, or sideways. Just like so. So you're going to go through a sideways phase. We had yesterday, we had a move up. Let's see if today we're going to have a continuation of move up. But usually in option expiration, you're going to get a big dump as well. So we're on our toes. We're see, we're going to have to wait and see how the New York trading session is going to handle the uh, open. And then we're going to go back into a base. But it's not in that particular order. So you could have the up move. You could have the base going into Friday. And Friday, you could have the sell off. I'm just an example. Um, today is Wednesday. And we have the core, PP, core CPI numbers. And uh, at 10.30, we still have the crude oil inventories. Typically, I don't even look at crude oil until after 10.30. So uh, today, after the close, as you see today, we don't have any pre-market, uh, you know, massive influencer that is going to affect our trading, but we have it after the close, Cisco. Cisco is a really big part of NASDAQ, so therefore we can potentially see uh, some uh, reaction in uh, tomorrow's trading session because we have Alibaba, we have JD. Uh, so these are going into NASDAQ. So NASDAQ may be a little bit more volatile going into tomorrow, may be in play more than today. And we have Walmart tomorrow as well. So therefore, Dow is going to be front and center. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Everybody should have a similar, if you want to participate in um, in the drill, uh, I spent like the last 20 minutes before the open, instead of studying the market and looking around to see opportunities, setting up my simulated account because I wasn't planning on this. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing the simulated active trader. This is where you should be initiating the trades. Okay. So does everybody see this? Does everybody see this? If you want to participate in the small five minute drill, uh, make sure that you have your assimilated account up, okay? And we could just get started. All right. So I'm not going to go through and explain what this is all about. You can ask your broker. However, okay, uh, however, uh, we're going to talk about, let's say, going in, getting in and out and how to set targets and how to play with, with the size. So I'm going to be showing you on the full size contract. You could go either full size contract, either you could go on the um, uh, micros, whatever it is that you're trading, just to get a little bit more accustomed. All right. So bottom line is when I call a trade, and you guys are going to see it uh, in the trading room. Let's say let's do a mock trade here. And let's say we're going to do NASDAQ. And these are mock trades. This is not this is a drill. OK, so if you see me post here, NASDAQ long, let's say 160 by 100. OK, and then I'm going to come with targets and say target is at 200, let's say 180 and 200. This is the mock trade. Again, I repeat, this is the mock trade. All right. So what you need to do is put in the order. So you want to put in the order once at 160. So what you do is you go to 160. OK, and then you put the order in. Boom. You use the green column on your active trader. And by the way, this is the Think or Swim platform. If you're not trading on Think or Swim, I don't know how to place orders on other platforms because I'm just using this one and I'm using this one to show you what I do. All right. So let's say hypothetically I'm taking it with one contract and I'm doing the uh, the 160, okay, uh, for the entry. Then my next step is to see the trade trigger. So I'm not going to be placing my stop, okay? Because if I place my stops, and I'm going to give you an example to show you if I place a stop. Let's say I place a stop, and then I'm going to show you a little trick. Uh, if I want to place my stop, let's say I'm going to place it at 100. Okay, so I'm going to go to 100. Uh, here we go. Let's say I'm going to place it right here. 
this is when, what, for example, if the price is going to come in, it's going to trigger me as a short. So it's not going to serve as a stop. So you want to make sure that when you are in, okay, when you're in, after your trade is active, and once you see it here, you're going to, um, hold on a second. Okay. Um, I'm missing something on my screen. <laughs> okay. Okay, just let me know if everything is clear so far. Okay, it's fairly super, super easy. Okay, super easy. So once the trade triggers, you have the option to put in the hard stop. If the hard stop, for example, is really far away, um, and if you have trading experience, and if you think that you're not going to get up to go to the bathroom or you're not going to get up, because the dog wants out, if you're not going to get up because you need a cup of coffee or uh, you're on the phone, make sure that you place your stop. I don't place a hard stop. I place a hard stop just uh, only when, for example, the price action is coming in, coming in, and then I go, yeah, I'm going to place a hard stop here. Okay. So this is what I do. So basically, uh, I put in my order. Now, let's say Okay, we have the call trade, right? So the goal, the call trade is 160 by 100. So therefore, we have let's say a 60 point uh 60 point uh 60 point risk. Let's say we have for example a $500 risk size per trade. Okay? So we have a 60 point 60 point stop and we have $500, our 1%, let's say you have a $50,000 account and you have 5%, I mean, you have 1%. How many contracts? Type it in here, guys. So if I'm using $500, how many full-size contracts can I get? Question, how many full-size contracts can I get? How can I position size? How many contracts can I get full-size if I have a 60-point stop in NASDAQ? zero the answer is zero the answer is zero now can i get in the tray using micros and if i can use micros how many micros i have a 60 point stop christo you got it you got it i have a 500 dollar one percent 500 dollar i have a fifty thousand dollar account my risk per trade is 500 dollars four micros Okay, so what I do here, let's see if I could use uh, M and Q, M and Q. It's not set up, oh, whatever. Um, but so let's say I have M and Q and I want to get it at 163, for example, right? Because I want to put it a little bit higher. I calculate the position size, but six, four contracts is just perfect, okay? If we would have had... A, a 17 point stop, then we would have reduced our size to three. So what is the next step that we do? Okay, we use the sizing, right? So we use the sizing. This is the most important step. This is the holy grail of trading, position sizing for the trade. Other than that, if you go with standard contracts, you're not going to have the desired account, the desired result, because your fluctuation is going to be all over, the price fluctuation is going to be, the PL fluctuation is going to be all over the board. You want to make sure that you have constant wins and constant losses. What that means is that if you're going to loss, if you're going to lose, you're going to have $500 loss. Because if, let's say you have another trade, and then if you have a 100 point uh, stop in NASDAQ, well, what's going to happen? You're gonna you're gonna use the same size, right? Let's say you're gonna use a contract, but you instead of losing five hundred dollars, you're gonna be losing two a thousand dollars. And what is the downside? Let's say you have a tighter stop. Let's say you have a stop of only let's say uh, twenty points, or let's say ten points. Okay, so with ten points, you could actually get two full size contracts instead of twenty five micros. So it's much easier on your budget because you're not going to be paying tons of commission for 25 micros, but you're only going to pay commissions for two full-size contracts, okay? This is something that we teach in the class. This is literally the holy grail, and we start the course with this, okay? Obviously, it's so much more than this. 
Uh, so what do we do? So we have four micros. You can see it right here. And we're going to place the stop uh, at 160 or 163, right? Because it's micros. It's 10 times more volatile. So what do I do? So for example, if I want to toggle super, super fast, I'm not going to go through all the numbers here and say, oh my God, where can I find that 160? So what I do is I actually scroll, 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 and put a buy order. You can see the buy order that is right here. And then what I do is I drag it all the way to my desired price. Let's say I want it at 163. So therefore, I have it here at 163, right? And you can see it right here. This is the arrow. This represents, you know, my buy order. You could actually see here that I have four micros at 163, okay? So you just scroll up. You just use this scroll up and down super, super fast. So you, so you don't have to look like, oh my God, I have to see where that 160, oops, I passed it. It's here, it's here, it's here. No, just scroll up, put your order, and then drag it back and forth. This is what I do. OK, absolutely, Matt, tighter stops will accommodate more contracts. So, for example, for example, I'm going to uh, I'm just going to take this out out of here. OK, let's say we go to the full size contract. OK, so let's say we have uh, let's take a look at the five minute here. No, five minutes still ah, not that not that bad. But let's say we have an entry just above these highs. Let's say at uh, let's say at one fifty five. OK, and let's say our stop is the 20 SMA. OK, and that is, let's say, 115. OK, so that means that we have a 40 point stop, a 40 point stop. If I'm using uh, if I'm using um, uh, $500 as the risk per trade would still not accommodate to use full size contracts. So I still have to go to micros. And if I go to micros, I need to use six micros. So it's under one contract. So you can see where the difference is. For example, if we have, let's go to a one minute here. So I'm let's say I'm trading the one minute and I want to go, let's say this is a buy setup here at 140, right? So you can see here that I'm not rushing to put my order in. I'm calculating. So I go like 140 and let's say if I have a stop here at 120, that's a 20 point stop. I immediately go to my position size. A calculator or template that we provide with the class, we provide with the trading room, um, but with the monthly and yearly plans. And I could determine that I can use one full size contract. So therefore, I'm here. Never forget to adjust your size. It has happened to me. Oh my God, it is horrendous, especially when it always works the other way. So you're always oversized. So for example, I wanna put a stop at 140. I have the 140 right here. Remember, I'm not putting, putting the stop in because you know uh, the order will act as a short. So I'm waiting for the order to fill. Then I place the stop. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Exactly, the qu quick position size calculator is key. To have, uh, let me just give you an example of how that is. And we're going to get into our analysis. Of, oh my God, it's like 10 minutes left. Are you kidding me? All right. We do provide the position size calculator. You can use a template. So for example, I was telling you guys, if you have, I don't know, you have um, a $25,000 account, okay? And uh, you want to use uh, 250. You can see it right here. You use 1% that, has, that is 250, $250. And let's say you have, let's say, a 20-point stop in uh, Russell, okay? So you can see here that if you have a 20-point stop in, uh, in Russell, you're unable to take a full-size contract, but you're able to take a micro, right? You're able to take two micros. So for example, if you have NASDAQ, if you have 10 points stop in NASDAQ, that allows you to take it with one full size contract, right? If you wish, you could take it with 12 micros. However, I try to stay away because remember, you're adding tons of commission. Futures still have tons of commission. And stocks is so much better. You don't have commissions. And, you know, the ease of position sizing is fantastic. But in futures, it totally sucks because they still have commissions, even though the market is literally, um, again, uh, uh, 
I would say it's, I would say manipulated because you got, everybody knows the market is manipulated, but they still sell our data to, uh, to, uh, to hedge funds and so on and so forth, to algos com algo companies and so on and so forth, uh, HFT companies, right? So anyways, um, so this is briefly uh, what I wanted to show you um, with, uh, with taking the position. So, okay. All right, so let's continue right now and we're gonna jump right in on uh, our trading session. And uh, it's actually very late, it's 921. Uh, we're seeing that the overall market is uh, uh, moderate to the upside. We have NASDAQ with 28 points up, so leading so far. Uh, Russell leading as well with seven points up, 0.3%. Uh, uh, we have the S&P relatively, you know, flattish uh, with six points up. And we have the Dow, which is uh, flat right now. It's about five points, uh, five points down. And we're going to go right now into our analysis for uh, for today and try to determine uh, our game plan. This most important part of the day, the game plan, right? All right. So, okay. Let me make sure that I have everything all set on my side. Okay. Because, okay. All right. So, um. What do we have in S&P is sideways action. Yesterday, we had a big boost in price action. Now we are sideways. We still, uh, as you can see, we have digested this low right here yesterday. So this is perfect. Uh, the next big hiccup is going to be at around 5,500. So we have about, I would say, 25-ish, 25-ish point room, uh, 20 to 25 point room into the next resistance uh, into it. So the directional bias is to the upside. Uh, the overnight support is holding at 46. So directional bias, again, we're going to be bullish on it. We're going to be looking for strategies to go long. Then we have NASDAQ, which again, uh, we have uh, support from the overnight trading session at 60. We had a revisit into the 19 right on the dot. And we have, we're trading right now in an open void. The next uh, target is going to be pretty much into the 350, 400. And we have room for velocity into the 500 and 550. So it has a lot of room to the upside. Remember yesterday, I've mentioned the fact that we have room to go into the 19,000 and 19,040. And actually, we closed a little bit higher. Uh, we closed at 122 yesterday. So we went, we had a high of 122. So we're bullish on the day. We're going to try to find strategies that are going to pinpoint to the upside. We're going to see if the um, numbers that we have uh, received at 830 are going to stick to the tape and investors and traders are going to take it from here on up. If there's going to be any kind of divergence because the market is flat-ish going into the open, we're going to reevaluate and we're going to see if we have some shorting opportunities. But right at this point in time, shorting is not an option into these charts at this point in time, 9.23 a.m. Eastern. And we have uh, also, let's take a look at uh, YM. Okay, so YM is going to uh, also be on the long list, even though it's a little bit uh, a choppier at the moment. We have support into the uh, 800 and into the 830. And this is a really nice area of minor support into the 770 to 780. We do have room for a little bit higher into the 40,000. So this is going to be the ultimate goal for today. We are almost very, very close. So we're, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we have some room for another 40 to 50. 50 points above 40,000, but I think this is why it's taking a little bit of break here. Loving the weekly rotation that we're getting in here. If the New York trading session is going to respond uh, after 930 in a positive way, we actually have velocity for the rest of the week to go into the 300 and 400. So from 40,000, we have velocity for about 300 points. So this is great because when you get velocity, you get follow through. When you don't get velocity, you're not going to get follow through. So this is great that we're breaking barriers into, um, into YM. Let's take a look at our TY. So um, RTY uh, had a, a, a blip right here that broke resistance. This is actually really amazing that it did that because it broke this 
multi-day resistance into the 2110. And it actually had a high very close to 2140. And uh, it does look uh, actually 21, what, what's the high here? 20, yeah, 2140, 2140, exactly 2140. Uh, the next resistance points that we have is 2170 and 2190 and 2200. This is going to be that frothy stratosphere area. So it has room to go more likely today into the 50s and 60s. So we have, let's say, 10 to 20 points from that overall 2140 to go higher. So we're going to be bullish above. We're still sitting on really nice support right here. We have minor support deriving from the prior highs. We're good to go for a little bit higher. It all depends on how the New York training session is going to react. Same weekly rotation, enabling velocity all the way to 2300. This is perfect. All right. Oil, oil inventory numbers today coming in at 1030. I actually like it for a long. So this is going to be my call for a swing. I like it over uh, 25. And I'm just going to put an alert here, really liking, it's going to be a sandwich and a sandwich that could break uh, to about uh, 82 and 84. So this, this is uh, a swing that uh, we have it uh, on deck so far. Uh, then we have GC. Uh, GC pulling back. Like I said, GC is a little bit wobbly right now. Yes, it's in a really nice uptrend. I have it for a swing in GLD. I'm not going to get into GC futures. Um, still very extended, still very choppy, sideways so far, breaking a little bit the support here. Uh, it doesn't have any parameters to act on right now. We we have to wait until the move has concluded. Probably today is not going to be the day. Probably today you may want to pull back to the 2480 area. So just about uh, just about here, 80 to 75. Uh, and if it does, whatever, it let it do its own thing. It, so for me, it's not a trade at this moment. And then let's take a look at the VIX futures and see where we are because the volatility is... Um, uh, right on top. Uh, so after the big spike that we had last week, OMG, <laughs> uh, what a roller coaster. We're back in, uh, back in the pre breakout area right here. And we still have room to go to a 15, uh, to $15 and, uh, 50 cents and about $15 even right here. You can see here, this would be, uh, the area that we would want to watch the 16 and the 15 area. A uh, huge topping tail onto the monthly. Again, uh, we can't assess the monthly until the month is closed, but the weekly has entered into this bearish, uh, cell. Uh, right into the 10 EMA right here. So I would be a little bit cautious as the price action goes into 16. I would put an alert there and say, hey, it's at 16, sound support. Maybe that's some uh, some action uh, may follow after this. So that means that the indices may start pulling back a little bit. All right, and let's take a look at uh, ZB. All right, let's take a look at ZB. We, are, we have an active trade in ZB. It is a swing trade. Uh, and uh, surprise, surprise, we have a brand new high. The market has grinded higher in the uh, overnight trading session. So this is positive for us. No action at this point. So we're in the money and we're in the profits. So we're just going to let it rock and roll. All right. So um, we're going to go back to the um, screen where we're going to be showing setups. And these are the shorter time frames. And we have the five minute throwout. The Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, oil. And we have a few seconds to the open. Everybody get ready for the open. Market has opened. Once again, today, a little bit of strength um, and holding pattern we notice in NASDAQ. 
So this is positive. Now 160 that I was mentioning in the mock trading when I explained the order entries. <clears throat> Maybe a good level. I would like a little bit of uh, price compression at this point because mm, here's the 163, 165. Remember a lot of fleecing and a lot of calibration can uh, happen right now because we just had um, numbers at a 30 and this is the market digesting the numbers thirty seconds until this first two minute uh, the first two minute candle will close and it's probably gonna set the stage see support is still under 120. Noticing the price action is advancing with hiccups again. So that means that it's impulse, impulse up and then down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's punching a new high and then quickly coming back in. Very flaky, very fleecy, very low volume in the market, just FYI. This is very typical for option expiration. Not many traders trade this week. If NASDAQ gets under 150, it will start retracing back into the 140s. Let's see how we currently hold this area. One seventy five. Well, actually, 176 key level for a break. Yep, NASDAQ under 150 and it's coming to 140, exactly what I said it's going to do. Uh, the most important thing is to hold the 127. If it's not going to hold the 127, things are not going to be that great. I'm craving, guys, one of those dates when we're done in five minutes and <laughs> out the door. We haven't had that in a really long time. The market is really making us work for our money. Chop, chop. The market got back into the 120, meaning NASDAQ got back into the 120. The small range that has developed after the numbers were out.
All right, so uh, the Dow is getting a little better action at this point. The first five minute candles are in. Yeah, what they're doing is they're fleecing the ranges. That's what they're doing. There could potentially be a two minute buy in NASDAQ over 140 again. The stop this time under 080. I'm just watching it. So far, nothing confirmed. We're still, the Dow is still trading within the first five minute range, the high and the low. Could be bullish over 935. But I'm not seeing any kind of, the price is not being picked up yet. So. <clears throat> Very moderate action so far. Not a lot of commitment and price action. The start of the day is relatively choppy. YM is trying to break the five minute high, but there's not a lot of commitment from uh, the S&P NASDAQ or Russell. Price action is fairly neutral right now. The volume is very low and definitely has decreased so much from the open. Not a lot of conviction in today's action. Maybe today it's going to be one of those sideways days. Who knows? Um, looking at the stock market a little bit just to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, Meta a little bit stronger, but um, NVIDIA, Broadcom, fairly neutral. Pepsi is about to trigger a rotation. Adobe sideways, Cisco sideways, Cisco is ahead of earnings, very sideways. Intel sideways. Qualcomm sideways today. So I'm looking at intraday charts for these stocks that may impact the price action in the indices. Home Depot stronger today. McDonald's sideways. These are some of the Dow stocks. JP Morgan sideways. IBM sideways. Caterpillar sideways, CRM sideways. So yep, 3M is about to pick up a little bit of steam here. It looks like it has a setup that could potentially uh, trigger no setups yet. First 10 minutes, remember 945 is an inflection point into this, uh, into, um, into the day is the first potential reversal of the day. Hey, Dan, no trades yet.
picking up some steam here with the Dow. Dow could potentially be a trade over 940, the stop 840. 100 point stop on the five minute, on the five minute. Like little, this little bar right here, guys, that you guys see, 46 points. This little guy right here, 73 points. <laughs> so yeah, the setup is going to be about 100 points. I'm not taking it. We have divergence right now coming in and S&P and NASDAQ and Russell, red bars, red momentum. They may want to pull the rug on some stops, crush some of the orders, and then fly high. Let's see what their agenda is for today. I like the activity in the Dow. So far, Dow is better, has a better structure than the rest of the indices. Even though it doesn't have that um, big follow through. We would be looking for a follow through to 40,000 and then 40,020. If we are going to call a trade in it. No trades. <laughs> just chill we're just observing the market just because and by the way guys for those of you that are very new to trading just because we're day traders that doesn't mean that we're going to take trades every day or that we're going to take a gazillion trades a day we trade only when the opportunity is there and when the setup is very clear and clean. Big divergence uh, in the market right now. Uh, the Dow is creeping up a little bit of just above that 40 area that we have been discussing. It's getting some buyers. Remember, even if you have a very strong setup or a strong, let's say, um, alert, or a buy or for a sell. And when you have a very strong, let's say, a, I wouldn't say a very strong, but a fairly stronger index. I mean, take a look at YM in comparison to the S, in comparison to NASDAQ, in comparison to Russell, right? I mean, these are weaker. I mean, look at the red bars, right? This one is putting green bars. If the market is going to balance out, let's say today, and if we prove that the price is going to go lower, don't think that the Dow is going to fly high. No, Dow is going to be probably the only the, the last one that is going to join the downside. OK, if these indices are going to create weakness. But from what I'm seeing in the market right now, we're still trading within the range of the numbers that came out. Right. At a 30. And you can see here, I mean, very, very clear. This is the uh, range set for the day, right? Range set for the day in all the indices. And we're watching these uh, three majors right here for now. Yeah, exactly, Matt. We want something that is really 
appealing to us from the trend standpoint, from the setup standpoint, from the risk standpoint. So risk to reward standpoint, we want something that is, you know, not just, oh, it's a setup, let's take it. We want something quality. We want quality. We don't want quantity. And remember what I said this morning, we may have, and we may see institutions right now that are shaking and baking and they're, uh, you know, taking out a lot of orders and calibrating the market for what's to come. So patience is key. Nobody's rushing us to take a trade. NASDAQ is uh, trying to make a little bit of a comeback. Remember, these are the primary levels from the numbers. They swung up and down. They created so far the range for today, and they're still trading within the range. Do you see that even the Dow did not take the uh, high out here? It didn't. Just NASDAQ had a peekaboo high, but now back, it's back in. We're seeing some bottoming tail so far. Not a lot of reaction into the 945. Why well, I'm very perky. NASDAQ doesn't have a very favorable uh, area here because it's uh, under some heavy duty MAs. For a rotation. Pretty much the only index that we could actually yeah would be like over these highs. Yeah, ZB, I'm loving it. I'm sitting on Really nice profits in the CB right now. We have a target into 126. We got it at 123.19. All right, chop, chop continues. Let's take a look at some hourly, right? You can see the range from the one hour. We're trading within the range, so no action, evidently. 
We have the S&P, one hour, still in the range, overnight trading session range. Remember what I said about option expiration. Big move up, big move down, a whole lot of sideways, and not in that particular order. We could have a big move down today, or we could have sideways today and tomorrow. And we have, let's check out the 1H in the Dow. See, the Dow is holding the best here. See this little candle right here? You go like, oh yeah, this is <laughs> this is just a little candle on the five minute. This is a 94 point candle. 94 point candle. Insane. So we still have support in the Dow of 850. And I'm looking for a potential entry, let's say above this high. So over 70. This one is really perky. This one really wants to go. And like I said, it, it can go to 40,000 and then the next pick stop. I just don't like the stop though. That's, see it already went. And it's heavily divergent compared to, to um, Russell, especially, and to NASDAQ. I'm seeing that Russell is really back to the medium point. Let's see what the reaction is going to be here. It's right at the medium point. NASDAQ is holding. SMP is holding, as long as they're holding the base, we're still bullish. We break below the base. We need price evidence that, and we need to see the price crushing below the base, pulling back to the base, confirming that the bottom of the base is resistance. And then that would be the point, Steve, when we would consider NASDAQ as a short. NASDAQ is into the medium pivot right here at the New York trading session. Right now, 78 points, uh, 78 points down, 0.4%. percent 0.40% down. It's kind of like in the same category with Russell. S&P flat-ish.
<laughs> uh, Eric, I am not talking. Nothing to add. Sorry. I can't make the market tick. <laughs> All right. Do you want me commenting like, okay, NASDAQ, is that 016? <laughs> SMP, is that 53? Why was that 60? No, there's nothing to add. As long as we're trading within those hourly ranges that I put on the chart for you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, no, we don't have any trades. We just sit and wait. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to think? Let's sing together. With some music. I can't put music on because I'm going to be posting uh, these recordings on, <laughs> uh, on YouTube. Uh, David and uh, YouTube is taking them down. Yeah, I know. I've done it. I've done it actually many times and they're gone. All right, so. Let's do some more analysis. Okay, do you guys see the screen? Okay, just, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> I know, it sucks. I can't put music on. I know, I, I like it with a little bit of music, but I can't. Nothing, no, no, nothing. They're, yeah, the copyright. I know. Total, not even elevator music, David. <laughs> okay. So uh, here's what, let's talk a little bit about this because I've been telling you guys that uh, the one hour range in NASDAQ, we're going to begin with NASDAQ. So we're going to be referring to these higher time frames. So NASDAQ here uh, still has to pour into the 19,000. Obvious support. The support is coming from this downtrending uh, 20 SMA, plus it comes from this uh, uh, bottom, the the range, the um, the fluctuation that it had uh, when the numbers came out. So bottom line is that uh, as long as we're holding this 19,000 and we're pretty strong into holding this, we have tested this level, like I said, when the numbers came out, and this is basically somewhat of an inside bar. Okay, let me just zoom it in a little bit so you guys can see it. Okay, this is somewhat of an inside bar from this whole entire range. As long as we're holding this range, we cannot take uh, we cannot take shorts because the dominant trend is still to the upside. You guys see it. Like if I squish it, squish it, squish it, you guys can see that we have double bottom low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and we have another higher low here that developed in the overnight. So bottom line, this is the higher low. This is the price fluctuation that is meandering with this, uh, with this level right here. But bottom line is that you're seeing the intraday timeframes that are trying to hold. We're at the median pivot. Notice that the pivot here is all the way, um, and this is from the extended session from 940, but the median pivot is right here in your trading session. So this is going to, this. I'm, I'm actually going to go by this, okay? Because we're not trading the European session, we're trading the New York trading session. And you can see here that we're getting very mild rotations on the five minutes. So this is the little trigger that came here that definitely doesn't bring us any confidence into taking the setup. And that is because, because it's literally trading right into the bottom. I would say that a notable setup would be somewhat uh, over the 15 minute bar high. So this would be over 100. 
However, I'm looking at the timing. This is the timing right here. And this is going to take a barely, because we just turned into the top of the hour, this is going to take about 15 minutes to close, right? So um, this 15-minute bar. So we're going to have to work with smaller time frames. But smaller time frames are not bringing price events that the price wants to trigger higher. So we're in a limbo right here. So bottom line is that if you want to trade with velocity, you want to look at the setups because algos look at these locations and um, um, and levels and setups in order to trigger. And if you don't have that, you don't have market participation. In fact, take a look at what the, where the market is right now. It's trading at 186,000 contracts compared to yesterday. Yesterday was also a very mellow day. But we actually managed to uh, punch a little bit higher. The reason why we have this uh, this lower volume grind to the upside, right? And this is where, uh, you know, especially in the PM session right after 12 o'clock, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's very hard to get in to these trades. Because when the market, the newer trading session opened, the price action was already high, was already I had, had already rallied for three hours, right? And we had no pullback, but we managed to get some trades. But nonetheless, it was extremely choppy. So we're going to be looking, let's see, for this level to hold, right? Let's say, let's call the level around the, uh, around the 20 level uh, and see how this level is going to stick. So uh, unless we uh, break 19,000, we're not going to be looking, let's say, for a short, okay? Shorting and uptrends is suicidal because you're getting, um, you're getting, for example, the uh, forced sell action from hedge funds and they're crushing the price. Let's say they want to take the price lower. Let's say they want to take it to 950. You're going to go short, for example, under 19,000 because that's what you're taught in 99.9% .9 of the cases out there that are on the internet but you're just going to be a victim of hedge funds that they're going to force it down and then they're going to take your money, spit you out, and they're going to take the contracts and roll them back up into the uh, into the prior highs. That's, that's their game. Okay. So um, I'm actually looking again at the Dow here. It had a pretty abrupt pullback, but we're going to talk about it in a second. So bottom line, for me to go on a short here, so if I were to, let's say, hypothetically look for a short, even though at this point in time, you should not look for a short. And by this point in time, I'm talking about 10.06, right? So this time, this time, this and in this particular segment of time. But if we get a break under 19,000, I would like to see it test this area. I don't want to be in. I want other guinea pigs to get in. I want them to test it, them to get in. I'm, I'm just getting in on confirmation. And then I want the price to zip back up uh, shallow or maybe a little steeper to 19,000 and then create a sell setup there that will enable me to get in with tighter risk. Because if I want to short it at 19,000, I have a really wide risk. What is the risk? The risk is probably going to be the 15 minute high or the five minute pivot high. You could actually select a lower high rate here, let's say. You would select it into the 60, but that is, you know, relatively uh, tight for these kind of moves. All right, let's talk about YM because I've been looking at YM. I don't like the action uh, right now in YM because it had an abrupt pullback. So as you can see here, where's YM? In a range. So what are we doing? Micromanaging and, you know, literally looking at micro entries. For nothing okay we either need to break above we either need to break above the range or break below the range to have some confirmation we're still in very much into an uptrend shorting is not an option right now at not now at this point in time as long as the price is still holding the 10 ema you're still moving higher and you still have odds to the upside notice where the price is at right now ask yourself where's the price trading at it's trading above the 20 SMA, it's trading above the 10 EMA. When the price trades above the 20, above the 10, you should be looking for longs. You should not be looking, your, 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 uh, you know, your brain should be wired. So you see where the price is at and you automatically go, I'm going to look for longs. 
when the price is going to have a close. And again, I'm going to say it again, a close, a one hour close below these MAs, then you can start thinking maybe it could be a short, okay? And then you're going to look for short setups, for sell setups. But as long as the price is trading above, do you guys see any kind of close below the 10 EM, uh, below the 10 EMA here? Oh, below the 20 SMA? No. No. So shorting shouldn't even be an option. Okay, shouldn't even be an option. Let's take a look at SMP. Exactly. I mean, keep it simple, guys. Keep it super simple. Okay, let me ask you this. Where do we have the close in SMP? Below the 20 SMA, right? Where do we have the close in SMP? Below the 20 SMA, which makes the price a little bit more bearish than the Dow, right? So it makes it a little bit bearish. So where's the price trading in relation to the 20 SMA? Below. So that means that it has more bearish connotation. Number two, where's the price trading in relation to the prior overnight activity? Where's the price trading in relation to the overnight activity? Where is that? Where's it at? Guys, type it in the room. Where is it at? Support. Right? It's trading on support. So even though it closed below the 20 SMA, it's still trading into support. How about the numbers that came out this morning? Did it take out the numbers? No. Did it break below the um, uh, the fluctuation, the numbers? No. Okay? So it didn't. It didn't. If we break the 40, what's the low here? Let me see. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, if we break the 45s, if we break the 45s, then we may have room to continue a little bit lower, okay, to 41. Kind of tight, kind of messy, right? And then we may have a little bit or more room to the downside to 34, perhaps even the 29. And you can see here the price action is weakening a little bit. Look at the volume declining, guys. Look at the volume declining. Right? So the volume is declining. So there's not a lot of participation. That means that they're pulling the rug, right? For some orders to go through to the short side. So some stops to get cleared out. Okay? A lot of times they're doing the clear out of the stops and they're jumping the price back on. Okay? Let's take a look at NASDAQ again. NASDAQ closed the first one hour candle below the 10 EMA. Okay. And it's really just now, just seconds ago, it broke below this level at 19,000 just seconds ago. Second, this is a one minute bar right here, seconds ago. Now, because we broke the 19,000, I wanted to see it crush a little bit more. And then I want to see a pullback. And if the pullback is shallow and proves that there's there are not many buyers into the game, I'm going to be looking to short it. But at this point in time, I'm not shorting it because this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a breach of 19,000 and then you're going to go like, oh my gosh, it doesn't have follow through. So you want follow through when you get in. Does that make sense? This is just my style of trade. This is how I trade. Uh, Matt, DB analysis for a yen trade. Yeah, it's a simple buy setup. It's the simplest buy setup that you can get. Yeah, I got it right here. I have my one, two, three, four candle down into the 10 EMA. I've got in. I have my confirmation with an inside bar, which means price compression ready to spring. And I got it right here above this high. Right here above this high. And that is my buy setup. And that is because... So my entry is 123.19 and my entry is so above the doji high. Okay, above the doji high. So the doji high is 123.12 and I give it a little bit more room for confirmation to make sure that the price is ready to take on new highs. If not, it's not going to work out. So if I take it here as a buy, I don't have confidence that it's going to break um, above or below. But here, just above, I have the confidence that uh, the price is breaking above. 
So my target is going to be into the 126. It's going to be just my first target. And uh, if we break above 126 this week, we're actually going to have a sandwich onto the um, uh, onto the weekly and we can actually start moving higher and lean towards a target into the 133 to 134. So again, this is a swing trade. It may take days or a weeks to develop anywhere between three to four days and two to three weeks to develop. So these are swing trades. The, the, this is my favorite style of trading because I don't have to look for micromanaging. I don't have to look at smaller time frames. I set the trade. I set my stop. And I'm done. My stop is at 121. You can see it right here. This is where my stop is. So I'm giving it a little bit of room below the pivot. This is my favorite technique. This is called the classic buy setup, right? And uh, my stop is right here. I, I don't even uh, I don't even watch it. I don't even watch it. I have uh, I have uh, alert set as it's going into target into 126. So I have alerts from. Uh, from these highs right here from 125.16 all the way to the 126 because that I need that alert in order to alert me to get back into the chart and look at price action and determine whether I'm going to take partial profit or leave the whole position right in. All right. Did that answer your question? What is ZB? It's the 30-year bond. And ZN had pretty much the same setup. So depending on whether you're trading a larger account or a smaller account, ZN is a little bit more friendlier in the sense of position sizing for small accounts. Here we go. All right. And it had the same setup right here. Okay, you could actually get it with half the size here uh, over 113.060 uh, and you can add back here uh, over 113.150 because um, you have this beautiful inside, inside action. So this is uh, ZN, this is the 10 year bond. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Uh, Bonnie is asking, what trading platform do I use? I use Thinkorswim. Um, Joe is asking, why are the micros uh, more volatile? Well, take a look at this first. Okay, I'm going to put here SMP, right? SMP is actually one of the uh, most... Um, um, let's say the heaviest volume index, right? And you can look at the volume even now. Oh my goodness. Look at SMP here. Okay. SMP here. So there is no love for the market. Investors and traders are sitting on the sidelines. FYI. Okay. So professional traders are sitting uh, on the sidelines. Uh, Larry, I just did the buy setup in ZB. That's a classic buy setup. Classic. You cannot get it any better than that. ZB and ZN, that was the example. Uh, so with SMP, take a look at the volume, a huge volume shift since this three-day pullback. And right now, this is the lowest volume that we've had so far. So nobody's interested in even trading it or investing in it or doing anything with it. So far today, everybody's on the sidelines. Nobody's doing anything. Remember, tomorrow we have some more data coming in at 8.30. Um, I think it's unemployment claims. Uh, but look at the volume right here. 419,000 contracts being traded where the S&P should be around 2 million, <laughs> 2 million. So that is really bad. It means that there are not many players uh, present today in the market and de retail sales. Okay, thanks, Bino. Um, so bottom line is that when you're getting lower volume in the market, first of all, you're not gonna get, uh, you're not gonna get follow through. Number two, you're going to get a whippy choppy action. Three, you're not getting any institutions on your side. I don't trade if I don't see institutions, right? And how do I see institutions? I know my triggers. So I have a set of setups that any hedge fund go by, okay? So hedge funds equal it 
big money. So if they are seeing what I'm seeing into the market, we both go in at the same levels, just like CB, right? Just like in the bonds. That's why you're seeing the continuation. And ultimately what you're seeing in the indices today and YM and S&P, NASDAQ and Russell is garbage, non-tradable noise. That's what I call it, non-tradable noise. I don't put my money into these moves, okay? I, I'm not trading, period. I'm not trading these moves. Um, bottom line is that, yes, it's still trading within the, this uh, this range. You can see what happened here. It faked the break. It faked the break below the hourly low and below the um, news low, the news bar low, just by a little, a little bit, tagged all the shorts in, like all the novice traders are like, oh my God, we're going to short, we're going down, we're going down. And take a look what happened. They're zipping it back up. In fact, we have a pretty nice 15 minute buy setup right here. Let's go back to charts because we may have some setups. Let's go to the 15 minutes. It's appropriate time frame for this time of the day because we're approaching 10.30, 10.30 potential reversal time because we basically had a down move from 9.30 to about 10 o'clock. And this may be the 10 o'clock reversal. Let's see what 10.30 is going to bring. But not too bad here. So S&P could potentially be along over 56. So above 56. So that means 57 for the entry uh, with a stop. 45 below this pivot. But the problem that I'm having here is that it's under the MAs. When you're seeing MA, the first thing that should go to your mind is um, spider web. Spider web. You don't want to be the fly that gets into the spider web because you're never going to get out, right? You're just going to die. <laughs> in there so that's it uh and to wrap up the uh, you know to wrap up the answer um when you're looking for example at micros because i gave you the example with uh, the mini smp and when you're looking at the example with uh, micros micros have lower volume than the full size contract low volume equals higher volatility and price fluctuation. Okay, so I hope that helps, Joe. All right, so... So Larry, this would be like a buy setup, for example. Okay, so this would be like a buy setup, like a rotation. But you're having the uh, MAs here, so that is canceling the setup, right? You want when you want to see the setup, like I said, I showed it in ZB uh, on my swing trade. You want to see a clean three to four bar pullback or even a five bar pullback into a dynamic MA. Um, if it's the ten MA, this is in a super power trend. The twenty is in a trend, right? Uh, so you're looking for a rotation. You're looking for this bar to take out the prior high. When a candle trades within the prior high range, high and low, it means price compression. So it's good for price because it shows strength. It's not violating the low and it's compressing into the highs. You can see where the close is at. Okay, so this would be the trigger for higher here. And you could see these kind of setups uh, on smaller, and if you see these setups on smaller time frames, perfect. That's that's what you should be shooting for. That's why I said like clear setups, clean setups. I don't I don't trade garbage. I don't trade noise. I don't raise my. I love my money so much, and I work hard to um, try to find high odds trades. And I wouldn't have this portfolio if uh, I wasn't very selective. I literally doubled, more than doubled my account in the first six months. Seven months, I should say. Seven months. Ah, six months. 
Uh, Phil, do you look at the day sessions on futures? In other words, futures uh, during regular trading hours, eliminating the overnight. Yes, I do. I actually look at both. And that's a very good point because here you have them with extended hours. And on this side, when I uh, do my analysis, okay, I do not have pre-market data right here on my upper side. So yes, I do that a lot. So I compare the two. And especially after 1030, more force to the charts that do not have the pre-market data. Uh, Mitchell, could this uh, be an S&P setup on the two minute? No, the setup on the two minute was that, and it's not called literally, it's not a setup because it's under the MA. So anything that is under the MAs, you're either going to look for a short squeeze. And in that case, you need certain parameters that are not being met here. You need to have extended uh, price from those MAs, yada, yada, yada. But this is not, this is not a setup by any means. No setup on the one, no setup on, the only setup that we have is on the 15 minute. And this is the New York trading session, 15 minute. You can see that it's above the 20, above the um, above the uh, 10. So, and in fact, I did mention it uh, as a potential setup. Remember what I said, over 56. And I said with an entry at 57 and potential stop below this pivot low under 45. However, when I look, so I like to compare the two. And when I looked uh, at the um, uh, five minute, when I looked at the five minute continuous section, I actually saw that the price action was running into the spider web, was running into the moving averages. And that canceled my, um, and here's the 15 minute, okay? That canceled my trigger. This is the 15 minute here. And I showed you the 15 minute uh, without pre-market data. And you can see here it's landing into the moving averages. So when it's landing into the moving averages, the danger is that, they may not follow through. So it may get tangled into it, may, you know, um, trigger it a little bit higher and then it may rotate back lower. So I hope this answered your question. All right. You, you short in downtrends and you go long in uptrends. It's really easy, really easy to remember. You have higher highs, higher lows, you only go long. You have lower lows, lower highs, you only go short. It's a very simple rule. That's when you go long and that's when you go short. Uh, yeah. The MAs, the moving averages that I'm using, the 50 SMA is here because I use it on the daily, but I don't use it for day trading, period. I use it for, uh, I use it for swing trading, okay? So that's going to impact swing trading. You can see here the price action rotated, it went into 50 SMA, and then it got rejected, yeah? So on the daily, on the weekly, um monthly whatever higher time frames so it's, it should not be really used by lower time frames so lower there are no uh, definite strategies using the 50 simple moving average onto the uh, higher time frames i just have it here because i can if i take it off here then if i analyze the daily i'm not going to have it so i need to have it okay so that's why the 50 sma is here other than that you're going to be using the 10 if you don't want to use the 10 exponential you could use that a simple moving average eight simple moving average pretty much serve serves the same kind of purpose uh i'm using the 20 simple and the 200 simple yeah that's why we took and by the way db was the uh, um see the first uh we have been watching it for weeks okay so zb let's go back to zb here on the daily uh i have been watching this for weeks i wanted a breakout over one uh over 121 and i had literally an alert into the 121 and i'm like when this happened when this uh when this bar you can see the bar here is a little bit wider 
Okay, so this happened in the overnight. So when the market opened, it was very close to 121, almost very close to 122, right? So um, I missed the move. I missed the move. I missed this breakout because it happened in the overnight and I didn't put a buy order because I didn't like the stop here. You can see how wide the stop is under this pivot. So my entry would have been 121. My stop would have been 117. So oftentimes you let the price go. You don't rush in a trade. And I have the patience to wait. And I waited. Right. I could care less. It could have went to the moon. I don't care. It could have went to 130, 135, 140. I didn't care. But I waited for a pullback that would get me back into a minor support. And here it is. I had my four. Uh, I had and I was watching it every day. And I watched it day one. I watched it. Do you think that I would have shorted this? No. No, I'm not shorting this. But I waited patiently until it set up for my desired play. And this is the reward that I'm getting for having the patience to stay in. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it, it, it's pretty good. Okay, it's 1030. The five minutes still very noisy. Check out the 15 minute here. 15 minute inside bar. This can produce a short squeeze in NASDAQ. The parameters for this, I'm looking to see if we could get a tighter entry and maybe. Uh, I'm looking for an entry in NASDAQ. Uh, 0 0.20. Okay, yeah, we could do this. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do this as well. Zero twenty for the entry. So it would be above this high. Our ultimate goal is to get it at least to forty. So the target would be forty. The stop here sucks. I don't want to use that large of a stop. I have a lower, a uh, higher pivot here into the zero, uh, into the 970. So I would say 970 for the stop based on a one minute. And hmm, let's go back to the 15 here. Uh, yeah, and like I said, the target would be into the kind of asymmetric target. Target would be into 040. If not, if not, see, too bad that it doesn't have a lot of room to go because we would have a, see, the target is 950. So you cannot short it here into the 60 when your target is 50. And depending on how YM is holding and this little guy right here, SMP is holding and Russell is holding, I don't know if it's going to work or not. You can see here that the indices are desperately trying to hold the range, desperately trying to hold the range. Okay. Mark is telling us that crude, crude oil inventories are out. This is the initial reaction off the crude oil inventories. We could take a look at uh, in about 10 minutes to see if we have a trade that is setting up. All right. So... As long as these other indices, other than the and the NASDAQ, that we may potentially have a little short squeeze here. But if we go back and forth for another two to three minutes, we're going to be canceling the trade most likely because it means that it's not going to run. The 10 EMA is going to start sloping down a little bit more. So your target is going to be so super asymmetric. It's going to be ridiculous. So no direction in the indice today, fairly um, sideways. Not fairly, super sideways. NASDAQ, uh, yeah, let's cancel NASDAQ for now. Uh, is the brown arrow, yes, that is my stop, 121. The trade was called in the trading room. 
And it was a bummer because we have been watching it since June <laughs> for that breakout. And the breakout happened overnight. So uh, I didn't take it, uh, especially because it had the really wide risk. But we took it the second time around on the retest. And that's why retests are so awesome in the market. Retests are always with smaller risk. That's the beauty about them. All right, so we have a sandwich down in that stack into support. So this nine, uh, this nine fifty area is still support into it. All right, now if we break, like I said, if we break the nineteen thousand and the eighteen nine fifty, and we sling lower, we need to prove that we sling lower. The next pullback may be shortable. Not this one right here. This is not shortable, this sandwich, because this is right into support. All right, why well, I'm coming in as well. All right, let's see what the next action is going to be. Pivot points, Phil. I'm not doing anything, Matt. If I'm doing anything, you'll be the first one to know. I'm gonna say it out loud. Uh, Joe, we have a class. <clears throat> so any kind of service is not gonna teach you anything. So it's just training, it's just training. So the only, uh, the only way to learn is via a course whether you take it with us or elsewhere i don't guarantee from other um i mean i have i have so many um so many members that have uh started their trading career and their trading education with some big boss companies where they paid four times of what we charge and they learn like 0.0001% that is totally be, totally knowledge that they cannot use. They actually send me the manuals and I was like, oh my God. One of the companies, by the way, was uh, um, had some issues with the SEC. You probably know what it, that company is. I'm not going to say it out loud. The majority of traders that um <clears throat> took courses yeah that's right one um really bad R rip off we teach you with trade out loud we teach you exactly what you hear me saying right here so you're gonna learn the exact analysis you're not gonna get in garbage trades we teach you to stock for the perfect opportunity. It's not a contest of, oh my gosh, I took five trades today. So what? What if you lose that all five trades? You lose 5% on a day. That's not fun. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and some other companies that are selling the dream. That never happened. <laughs> Thanks, Francie. Oh my gosh, no. No, no, you can't. I mean, you pick up things and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, oh my God, that's a bad thing. No, no, no. You learn some things, but here's the thing. People that trade for a living, okay, have, you know, don't have books out there. They don't get paid royalties. Okay. They just, I, I trade. We teach the course four times a year. Okay, we used to teach it every month. Okay, now we teach it four times a year because I want to focus more on trading. Okay, and we teach it live. That's the difference, right? So we teach it live. So you have a question, you know where to come. Okay, all right, let's get back to the market. All right, so as you can see, the Dow is still trading, had a peekable high just above these numbers high, right? The numbers bar. And then it's just zigzagging back and forth. So basically, it's in a range, right? So you have the top of the range and you have the bottom of the range. And you actually have a little bit of a lower range right here from the, uh, from the open that is being tested. But other than that, it's a chop. It's back and forth. We know that this is uh okay for this week why because it's the option expiration week okay it's the option expiration week we have two more days into option expiration that is wednesday and friday is the option expiration so this is hump day this is hump day typically hump days are you know kind of wobbly kind of sideways kind of choppy when you're trading into the option expiration week okay so here in ES, look what happened. Hold the rug, swoosh down. Everybody go like, oh my God, I'm gonna short right now. Oh no, I'm stopping out. See, roller coaster. Sit back, relax, and until you have a setup that is worth taking, don't take it, okay? Not worth it. Look at this bottoming tail. So many victims right here. Remember what I said about NASDAQ? NASDAQ has two critical levels, 19,000 and 950 area. This is the support zone. It's relatively wide, okay? And until you see an avalanche down, let me just draw it to you so you understand because I'm such a visual person. And if you're a visual person, you're going to understand much better what I'm saying right now. Okay, so mm, what you want to see here, okay, so this is the first area of support, right? This is the second area of support. Oh, yes, Vita. <laughs> Very expensive roller coaster. Okay, so these are the two majors, uh two major levels of support. Then you have another level of resistance. Okay, right here. Typically, if you break the first level of resistance, so you have you also have the 19,000 here. Okay, you have the 19,000 here. So for example, if I were to take a short, I need to see three bars at least on the one hour. So I need to see, you see this one right here? This should be another red bar. Let me just put it a red bar. Okay, this should be a red bar, okay? Once I have my red bar, I need to see some kind of a pullback. So let's say we have an inside bar and we have another bar that would take it into, let's say, around. You see where this level is at right now into the 19,000 that, uh, that I drew it? Let me just put it with a different color so you can see it, all right? This is the 19,000 level. Okay, 19,000. So I want to see a very shallow pullback. This is when I would short. Okay, that is the only time when I would short. I would short on this rotation that would prove that the price is ready for a leg down. Why? Because I would have what it's called a lower high. 
right here where the X is because I have the move down, I have the shallow pullback, and then I have the lower pivot high. Okay, that's when you wait for confirmation. I understand that it is very hot. These markets are very hard. Last month was incredibly hard. Okay, last month was incredibly hard to trade. This year was hard to trade. Even though we had a nice move and really double gorgeous double digit gains within the indices and in the stock market, it was not an easy uh, year to trade. It was very hard. We had to work for the money. Last year was easy, okay? Even the year before was easier than this year. It was not easy, but 2022 was easier than this year. Okay, can you explain why those lines are support lines? Well, easy, right? So first of all, let me just take them out so you can see what's underneath. Yeah, not necessarily. July is, July is very active because you have earnings season. July is very active. It, it, I mean, don't, don't go by what other people are saying. Not true. July and August are really great months to trade. Algos do not take vacation. Volume has been constant. The uncertainty is what messed up this market. <laughs> okay? Are we going to have the third world, uh, uh, world, war, world, the next world war knocking at our door? World War III? Oh, who knows? Crazy. Okay, so let's get back to levels. I have an intraday support level into the 950, Mary. And I have the uh, other support level from the numbers low. Okay, you got it? So you see this bar right here? This is support. If I go to a different time frame right now, you would see the support zone. If I go to a 15 minute, you will see that this low forms support, right? And it's right at the 19,000. This is the medium pivot right here into the 950 support, intraday support. Okay, so I hope that helps. All right, and now you're seeing like, again, chop fest, chop fest, chop fest. Bottom line is that we're heading close to 11 o'clock. I think we're done for today um, because there's no action and I'm not going to sit around and just watch this noise. Uh, but I'm going to go to the 15 minute here to see Nah, you know what? Bottoming tail into support. We may get a rotation. So I'm just telling you what it could happen. The risk to reward is totally asymmetric, which makes it for me a no and a hard pass. So it would be a rotation above this candle high. The stop would have to be below this low, no question about it. So if you're looking at this trade, by the way, the size of this candle is 90. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 89, it's 90 points, 90 points from top to bottom. So because you're going to give it a little, uh, you know, a few points, you're dealing with a hundred point stop in NASDAQ. So for me, it's a pass. Okay, for me, it's a pass for this one. I, I don't want to take NASDAQ with hundred points. Okay. Uh, it's Oh, if I would have had 200 points upside to it and I had a good risk to reward ratio, I would. But in this case, no, thanks. Because the target for this uh, for this particular trade would be somewhere into this 10 EMA right here. So I would be risking this for a little profit into here. I have no guarantee that the price is gonna take the 10 EMA and zip back up into the next support zone. And the next support zone would be like into this area right here. Okay, so that would be the equivalent of, let's say, 060 area. That's that's my take on this. Um, so let's go back here to the five minute and all and reevaluate it. See, you don't have to, like, 
overanalyze everything. If the trade is not there, just you don't have to take it. Go for a walk and come back later to see if something sets up. Uh, Joe, which chart patterns do you like the most? Okay, simply said the ones that are making me money. <laughs> All right, I only like the patterns that are making me money. I like patterns that trade with the trend. I like to see the 20 SMA left behind for uptrends or, <laughs> or the 20 SMA below in order to short. I like buy setups and breakouts. These are my favorites. So this is the real answer to your question. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bonnie, uh, I do not see how to use the Gerson platform without using Schwab. Do you know another platform that can uh, have a similar yours after Trevor of uh, Fidelia? Um, interactive brokers is friendly on the user side. I I, I don't like the charting with interactive brokers. I'm not affiliated with any platform guys. So I could give you my honest opinion on all of those, on all of these platforms. Uh, I had Trace Station. I, I had a really hard time, uh, you know, setting up the charts and, you know, it, it's, it's not for me. Uh, it's not for the amount of charts that I use. I'm going to share with you just to have an idea to see how many uh, how many windows I have open here. Um, but Bonnie, what I could suggest is, yeah, but you want the active trader. The active trader is really awesome. Um, I know, Jill. I know. It's it's a really amazing platform. Okay, so Trade Station is an amazing platform. However, and commissions friendly, so it's good. It's robust. It doesn't have many issues. Um, it's it goes pretty well through volatility. So it's low on commissions. Exactly. That's what I mean. It's like really friendly. Uh, but it's not user friendly. So you need time to learn it. And if you're using, uh, and if you're having like a gazillions of charts that, you know, I'm just going to show you what I have in a few seconds. So you understand. Yeah. Your money's parked with fidelity. Yeah. Is there like, and you can't take your money out and go elsewhere. There is an option, for example, if you want Bonnie the charting, you can put $500 or $1,000 and open an account with TD Ameritrade and then use their charting system because you're going to have access to live trading once you uh, uh, once you put some money into the account. I think the minimum is $500. Yeah. But uh, so like I said, trading view is fine. But if you see the amount of charts that I have up, um, trading you would never be able to do that. It's just the charting software that, yeah. Uh, TD Ameritrade um, was bought by Schwab. So uh, now Schwab owns a thinker, a thinker swim. Yeah, so like I said, you know, uh, you could have you have the option to uh, to use the TD Ameritrade. The only reason why I use it is because it's very user friendly, very user friendly, and it has a really great charting system. Very very robust. I don't trade options. I don't like to trade options. I don't know if I have a high price stock, maybe I'm interested in options, but I don't. I don't. I don't like to I don't like to see my options expire worthless if I'm owning the stock. I'm owning the stock. I could just own the stock for 6 months or a year. Or 10 years. 
to me with options is a little bit more like guessing. You got to guess a lot. I'm not guessing. Exactly, exactly, Doji Man. Uh, futures with zero commissions, I haven't heard. I have never heard of futures with zero commissions. But if you do, let me know. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. Because my commissions only this year, I was uh, checking them. Let me see what they're up to right now. Commissions this year. Yeah, 17,000 in commissions this year so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um I have to I have to say something. Um this year I have placed the most trades So I haven't been trading uh, a lot, for example, and that's really great. Last year, this year, because the market was choppier, I placed a great number of trades. So for example, yesterday, I had like six, seven trades. I usually take one, one trade a day, one to two trades a day. Yeah, you can stick with Q-Spice and Russell. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, so let's evaluate the market and see where we're at. So the Dow... Dow really wants to get over this 40,000 and it's holding the range really, really nicely. Really, really nicely. <clears throat> I would say the Dow is the strongest at this point. And if there's going to be a trade in the afternoon over 40,000, this the Dow is going to be it. The Dow is going to be it. Let me see the four hour. Yeah, the Dow is going to be it. And you can see here the 200 SMA into the 80. That is the target zone. That is the froth. Okay, that is the froth. Love the minor support into the 770. See, this is not bad here. This is not bad here. I would do a half size over 60. Uh, by the way, any trades that you take right now, you're going to be in them all afternoon and potentially overnight. So just FYI, because they, if this support is going to hold, it may take you higher. And if it's not going to take you immediately to 40,000 and above, 
remember, take partial profits if you want to take something along those lines. Yeah, nice. See, remember we talked about this asymmetric trade here of about 100 points. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to you would have to sit in these trades. You would have to definitely sit in these trades. Russell is not turning around. It's sitting right here into the support level into the 90s. S&P is strengthening. We're heading into the top of the hour, and this is an extremely bullish candle. This may have continuation. I have to agree with Edwin. Not worth it for me either. Um, <clears throat> if you love your money, you're not going to spend it on stupid trades, on trades that are not in sync with momentum, trades that are not setting up, okay? I, I call them stupid trades, okay? You can call them whatever you want. I do too, Edwin. Nope, I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to. All right, so guys, top of the hour, very interesting time for the market, which... This, which proves that I was right from the get-go. Institutions were pulling the rug and then they pushed the price back up. They pushed the price back up. <laughs> NASDAQ is a little bit more under pressure. Of course, then when anytime, come in tomorrow. Don't feel forced to take trades. Don't feel, I don't feel, I don't force myself to take trades. I don't, I never force myself to take trades. For what? To prove what? Just to lose money or just to say, oh, I had a trade, I called a trade. No, you take a trade only when the momentum is right. I love the setup here. This is an hourly setup. How can all institutions have the same strategies? Because, Ryan, there's only, I mean, people that are telling you, oh my gosh, I came up with this strategy. I have invented a new strategy. There's no such thing as inventing a new strategy because the patterns, the institutional patterns have been around forever. They're not going outside of the box to invent a new strategy based on an indicator that they bought on the internet that had an $8 trial, okay? <laughs> they, uh, let, let, me, let me give you guys something. Okay, for you guys to understand how the market is manipulated by hedge funds, you're going to hear it from Jim Cramer right here. Uh, don't listen to it now. Just take the link and listen to it whenever you want. And then you're going to understand. I was trained by institutional traders, by an institutional trader. So I know what I'm talking about. I own what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that is exactly an explanation. I posted the link there, that YouTube link to an interview with Jim Cramer. That explains exactly what I have been telling you guys that it's going to happen at the market open. What did I say? We're either going to break out and stay up or they're going to pull the rug to get, to get you out of the game, force you out. And yes, it's legal for them to press the price back up. Dum, da, da, dum. So Ryan, that's going to answer a lot of your questions. You just need to be a little bit longer in the market to learn all these things.
Yep, sign up for the training room or for the class. Either for the yearly membership or the monthly membership. All right, so let's go back here to a 15 minute. Then you should have it. You already have it. You have it in your welcome email. Yeah, of course, you, you should have it. If not, shoot me an email. If that link is not active or if there's something wrong with it, of course. All right, so bottom line is that the indices are going to move higher. I like why I'm here. Like I said, this is going to be an unofficial call. Uh, if you like it here, it's right into the 970 to 975. 975 acceptable entry. The stop is going to be below 820. So you could use A25. You could actually use A30 as a stop. Okay. Uh, this is going to take the price to 40000 And it has tradable void uh, to 40080 With a caution zone, zone Um, I would put that as an intermediate target into the 50s because this is where, and it's coming from the daily in the 50s, is this prior low. That's why I said the caution area. Again, this trade is going to keep you a fairly long time in the trade. A fairly long time, even in, even in the overnight. This is not a day trade. It's more like a little overnight swing, if you will. Okay, so I don't recommend, I, I'm not even going to take it. I'm not even going to take it. I'm not going to take any trades today. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some more questions. Absolutely. These are not trades for um for uh for prop accounts. Exactly, Edwin. Good thing that you highlighted that. Thank you. Edwin, I love what you said. He said he started trading like this with a graph paper pencil and investors daily. Uh things have not changed. Absolutely. Things are not changing. If you're hearing people, you know, social media, YouTube, wherever saying, I, I invented this strategy or I came up with this thing or I came up with this indicator. Guys, they're just delaying your learning process. Be very, very, very careful. Okay. Be super careful with this. They're going to delay your learning. Yes, exactly, Edwin. Or with tons of lines. <laughs> or with tons of lines. Oh, I am going to share with you uh, my layout, okay? I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna walk you through all the windows. Uh, and the reason why I'm telling you this, like Matt said, new and uh, new indicators delay learning. Um, I've been there. I've done that. Okay. So I thought when, when I started trading, right, I started trading. And in fact, this is the same style that I had, but I, it just, it was just improved after my mentorship and everything else. So uh, that took it to new heights, but it's basically... Simple candlesticks, 
not a lot of indicators. It's pure price action, what I'm watching. Price action. Watch the charts, guys. Watch the action on the one minute. Watch the action on the two minute. Watch the action on the five, on the 15. Wait for a setup to happen. That pullback, that reversal that needs to happen. Uh, a lot of traders don't have patience for that. And the that's, that's the biggest reason they fail. Don't be those traders. Have the patience. If it's not setting up really nicely, then don't take the trade. Okay. The new thing AI bought. Yes. Disastrous results. I have talked to someone um, a few days ago in regards to investing, uh, automated investing with, with robots and stuff. They're underperforming and they're really bad. So for example, yesterday, there was a buy signal at the end of the day into NASDAQ. Uh, hello? <laughs> I mean, we're trading into, uh, we're trading into resistance already. Okay. Wes, do you ever scalp? Yes. I do scalp when we are in a trend. So far, we're in a sideways range. The charts in the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ are in sideways ranges on the one-hour time frame and the four-hour time frame. Scalping is when you have a trend established. Scalping within a range that we have today is almost suicidal. Why? because the risk to reward ratio and because you don't know, we are also trading in an option expiration week and I never recommend scalping in an option expiration week. And other than that, the volume is low. You don't have clear signals for follow through. That is because resistance is from level to level to level to level. But yes, I do scalp. Not many scalping opportunities out there today, but not, not no, let me rephrase. No uh, scalping opportunities at all. Okay, so here in uh, the Dow, you can see that basically over 982, we can potentially, first sandwich that we're seeing that is conclusive that it may want to go higher with a tighter stop. So if the price gets above this high, so the high is 81, so you need to have a print of 83, 84, 85 for the entry. And that is where you would put the entry. So let's say 85, let's define it at 85. Then you put, you could actually place your stop below the red or option number two below the 10 EMA. And here you would have your first target into the 91, I know it's not much considering that you took the trade at 85, but you cannot ignore the resistance that has been developed by this high into the 955. So that still remains your target one, regardless of how you look at it. And then your next target is going to be into the 40,000. This is also psychological level. So make sure that you take some profits into the 40,000 because it may not go through 40,000 like butter because you are still trading into somewhat resistance here. And again, I want to show you the daily where that, uh, 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 that second target, actually third target would come into, into the 40, uh, 40, 50 right into the 50 zone right here. So this is the first time where we're seeing like, this would be like, Wes, this would be your scalping opportunity. So over 85, the stop can go 950 or below 950. You could use 940 if you want, because here's the thing in a volatile market, you're going to get a little pinch of that tail down. It's not like the stock market. The stock market doesn't have to do this, but the futures market does it because it's highly manipulated. Watch that video that I posted the link to see what the what kind of game they're trading. And once you know all these things, and I know when you were first starting trading, you can't know all these things, but we teach you. We teach you setups, that institution, uh, that these hedge funds that we teach you actually. So my mentor taught me 
you know, Jim's, Jim Cramer's method. So I know on, when to identify when, when they're pulling the rug. We have been talking, rewatch this video. Even if we didn't take a trade today, rewatch the video. Okay. Yes, we do. Uh, Juliana, you have been in here before. You know exactly what's going, what's about. All right. So what I want to do right here is, um, I use the same targets West. It's all technical analysis. It's all technical analysis. My, my stops, my entries are based on technical analysis. You have to position size regardless of what you're doing. If you're not position sizing, you're going to blow up your account guaranteed. 100%. Just, just write it down on a piece of paper and bury it in your desk. Wes. And then six months, set a reminder on your phone to look at the note <laughs> and what I have said, that if you don't position size, you're going to blow up your account. And see what happens in six months. Okay. All right. So um, this is a nice price contraction here in um, in YM, I have to say. Ni nice here as well. See how the price action is settling. But it's right into resistance, so you don't have a lot of room to explode. Uh, but generally over 66 uh, in YM, this could be bullish and the stop could be under, uh, under 59. And, uh, so we have sandwiches throughout here. I don't like the 200 SMA here into the 100, but, um, it could potentially start going, right? Could potentially start going. Uh, Russell is not lifting off the bottom. Russell is incredibly weak. Okay, so uh, I'm going to answer more questions, but I just want to walk you through very quickly some of the screens that I have so you understand, you know, what I'm looking at and why I know what I know in the market. And it's because I watch a lot of charts. Um, okay, so the first thing that, you, uh, that I have is my main screen, my home screen. Okay, which is this one right here that I have shared before. Okay, this is my main screen where I have the smaller time frame and I have my higher time frames. And I don't have pre market data on these four charts on top, on the one minute all the way through the 15. The other screen that I'm going to share is a very similar screen to the one I share in the trading room, but this one does not have pre market data. Do you guys see it? Because I can't tell on my side. Okay, so do not have pre market data. So here I only have newer trading session data. That's it. And I'm focused on newer trading session data. I'm combining the screen with this other screen. And it, it looks, it seems complicated, but it's not. We teach it how to do it in the course. Um, and there's a reason for that because there are some setups for continuous action and some setups for, for immediate action. And Wes had a question about scalping. And this is how you get your best scalps. Uh, and as, especially when you have a really dynamic market, uh, then you have entries as soon as 9.32 and 9.35. So you have uh, setups in the first two minutes and the first five minutes. And these are my favorite. And they're not risky at all because you position size, period. And they're not risky in the sense that, oh my God, because a lot of traders are taught wrongly by individuals that do not trade. And that have heard it somewhere in the stars that, oh, my God, it's so risky to trade in the first hour or in the first 30 minutes. <gasps> wow. That's because they don't have a set of skills that enables them to trade that particular uh, that particular time. But if you do have that set of skill, you will see that it is better to trade in the first 30 minute or one hour than to wait even for 1030. All right. So this is the second screen that I have. All right, uh, let me see. 
All right, the next screen that I'm going to share is my analysis screen. So once I'm in the trade, okay, uh, on one side, I watch all my time frames, but I also watch this uh, chart right here that you guys see. And typically this one, I leave it on the one minute or the two minute just to observe immediate price action, right? So I have it on the one minute. Uh, it enables me to watch price action and how it handles uh, price, how it handles uh, the movement patterns, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is also something that I watch. Um, the other screen you saw it in the pre-market game plan, and this is the analytical screen as well. Okay, so you have uh, all the time frames here, or the the macro, let's say macro time frames, all the way to the monthly that you have, and uh, definitely you can um you can watch. You can change it, for example, here, and you can see that all the symbol of the same symbol generates on every single chart. The other thing is, okay, let's see. All right, this is my active trader. Okay, I have four of these. So I have one for each index. I actually have two platforms up every single time. And now with Schwab, it's relatively easy because you can just go through them um, very fairly quickly. And you don't have to shut a platform down, have another platform open. You just uh, shift um, the uh, from the down arrow. And uh, here I have my active trader. It's very similar to the one that I had in the simulated account. Uh, but I also have here... Um, the um, spread that I need to watch. So now you have very good spread uh, in the market, but when the market becomes volatile, uh, the spread widens and I sit on my hands, right? So I don't trade when, when there is a really wide spread. Uh, aside from uh, four of these that I have for each index, which makes it very easy because I don't have to go, okay, I'm going to change the um, symbol and all that stuff. All right. Uh, then I watch, I have a screen here, for example, with, hold on just one second. Cause I, yeah, I, yeah. Let's do this first. Okay. So um, here I have a screen with, uh, and these charts are daily charts. And uh, they are Dow stocks. These are Dow stocks right here. So depending on the weight of the stock, UNH, biggest component, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Microsoft, McDonald's, et cetera. Uh, so what I watch here is the activity. And obviously, if you're asking yourself, why is the Dow a little bit more active right now? And that is because you can see that UNH is one of the, its biggest components is very strong today. You can see Goldman Sachs is sideways, but you can see that Home Depot is strong today. I hold a position in Home Depot as well, long uh, uh, swing. Microsoft fairly strong today, trading above yesterday's high. McDonald's sideways. You can see here that JP Morgan, for example, a little bit stronger. And these are daily charts right here. Uh, IBM going for the breakout, Caterpillar. So when you're watching stocks, okay, this is what you're watching. You're not watching a list and going through percentages. How much did it gain today or how much did it lose today? You're watching the chart. You're watching price action. I also have a set, a very similar set. Let's see here. Okay, here's here's the one for one of them. And this is one, okay, one of them for uh, NASDAQ, uh, for, yes, for NASDAQ. These are NASDAQ components. And this is Apple, this is Microsoft, this is Amazon, this is Tesla, uh, Meta. And then you can take a decision and say, okay, so if Apple is strong, Meta is strong, big power players, uh, Microsoft is trading above yesterday's high, then... Uh, NASDAQ will have the potential to run a little bit higher, but uh, today NASDAQ stocks were not as strong as the Dow stocks. And that's why the Dow is running higher today. And it's a little bit stronger than the rest of the indices. 
I also have, uh, and I wanted to share this first, but it was not right there in that order. So uh, this, uh, these are futures right here and I have the bonds here. So this way I don't miss a trade when I watch the whole panel because if something sets up, I'm gonna see it right away. But if I have it on a list or if I'm looking on a list, of course, you're gonna miss it. So these are small things and tricks so you don't miss a trade. So this is how I traded ZB. So actually I was watching this and I said, okay, 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 okay. So I, uh, you know, I kept on watching for four days. I got the rotation, I got in, right? I got in. So we signaled, we signaled basically the entry here and we wanted for that doji to close. And we actually mentioned it in the room. And we said, yeah, we want that doji to close in order to um, in order to uh, see if the next day is going to set up, right? And then when it's set up right here on the 9th, this is when we called the trade. Because here, you didn't have the setup, right? Because this trade was still active. So I needed the end of the day. Sometimes you need the end of the day in order to take decisions the next day. And if it's not setting, if it's not conclusive on the prior day, so you have a trigger on the next day, then you have to wait a little bit longer. So we had uh, we had the trade that um, um, was called on the 9th and actually triggered on the 10th. So here it goes. This is how you uh, this is how you look at charts. Okay. So that's why I said like if you're using Trading View, I mean, come on, you you can't have this. You're either trading professionally or you're meandering with a little retail platform. Like seriously, that's great for a person that is doing options and taking an option a month or an option a week, right? Uh, or a person that is trading, I don't know, one thing at a time. It's a hobby. Yeah, it's more of a hobby. It's fine if, you, if you're on the go, if it has an app or something, and for ease, you don't have to pull the platform up. That's a different thing. But for any other reason, I highly recommend have a robust platform, okay? You need to have these uh, these screens all, all set up. And it's not, and here's the thing, the more real estate you have, the easier it is for you to see the trades. People that trade off a laptop, day trade off a laptop, mm, I have my doubts, okay? I have my doubts. I would love, for example, to be able to trade from the beach, from a laptop or from an iPad or from a phone. I would love to. I haven't found the formula for that though. I haven't. I wish I did. I haven't found a formula. So in my opinion, in my opinion, these are all lies. If, if you're seeing pictures like financial freedom, live your dream, and you're seeing me on the beach with a phone and day trading, I'm freaking lying. <laughs> I'm freaking lying. I'm telling you. Oh, if you're investing or swing trading, totally doable. But for day trading, oh my God, they're lying through their teeth. You can't. <laughs> um... So uh, let me answer some more questions. Uh, how many monitors are you using on this display here that I have currently? At, I'm in, in the Michigan right now, and I have four monitors. And I'm using a laptop for a scanner as well because I do uh, look at stocks and for swing opportunities. I actually take a lot of swings. I mean, I call all the swings, but I... I take a lot of swings. I love swing trading because I don't uh, have to babysit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, sit in Fort Lauderdale on the beach. I, I, If you're finding how to do that, <laughs> please sign me up. Is GC setting up? That's an interesting question because GC has been very flat and it has been trading from pivot point to pivot point to pivot point to pivot point and has been, uh, you know, kind of like ladder down. Yeah, sign me up if you're day trading. I would love it. I would love it. Sign me up. Seriously, I I'm not even kidding. 
All right, so let's take a look at GC here and see what we're uh, what we're up against. Uh, you see this prior high right here into the 90s, right? That is support right now. That is support. So the question is, is the price going to hold the current level support or is it going to fall apart all the way to this 10 EMA? Because it has room to go, it, let's say, into the 80s, 75 to 80. So now you take it to your five-minute chart and say, hey, Am I willing to gamble on this, knowing that I have that support level from the daily? Once again, the daily is right here. So you're trading right into support, let's say into that 80, right? But you have room, let's say, um, I'm sorry, I, I meant 90, okay? But you have room to go, let, let's say, let's say 75, best case scenario, 75, right? So that would mean if you want to risk, you like the fact that the price is under the 20, under the 10. That means selling pressure. You gauge the lowest point that you have on the chart because you need to breach that. The lowest point in this case is 85. So if the price goes below 85, you may have room to go into the 75-ish area, just like so here. And if it gains velocity, then you could go a little bit lower. But keep it in mind, the target is coming from the daily and the daily is in a massive uptrend, okay? And here, it's power trending. This pullback is zero compared to the power trend that is in, right? So it's above the 10 EMA. So it means that it's power trending. But you could take it, for example, for a scalp down. You have minimum risk right here. Remember, the market is very, very low in volume and you may not get the, uh, the follow-through. And remember that the price action has been stuck right here since 920 that's right for two hours right for more than two hours the price action is holding this area okay so i wouldn't take it i would not take such trades it's not going lower because this is minor support deriving from the prior pivot high from 717 period uh but if you want to try a short lowest point right here 85 and uh, your target should be like into the 70. Your stop should be below, uh, should be above the 20 SMA. So 90 to 95. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's how, that's how you would uh, do this trade. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see. Lawrence, what chart platform did you say? I'm using uh, uh, Thinkorswim by Schwab. It used to be TD Ameritrade, now it's Schwab. Not yet, correct. So Vita, not many, uh, not many um, uh, platforms can be as robust to accommodate so many screens, so many charts on so many screens. You can't, you can't, you, you can't have that. Um, how do you plot your pivot points? You just go to your chart. Are you using think or swim, David? Okay. So if you're using think or swim, okay, you just go to this icon here, click, okay? And then what you do here is you type in pivot points. Careful because there are tons of pivot points. These are the pivot points, simple pivot points, okay? And you click on them. You go add selected and they're going to pop up here and then you hit apply and okay. But before you do that, if you want to um, color code them, then you go to this gear. Okay. And make sure you have them show today only because you're not interested in yesterday's price action from the pivot point standpoint. You're just interested in today. So that means that today, here it is, show only day. Yes, 
Okay, and then you can color code them anywhere, uh, any way you like. I have the resistance with green, I have the pivoted point with yellow, and I have uh, uh, the support with red. Okay, so I hope this helped. Of course. All right, so you can see here, so uh, just curious, anybody took uh, the Dow, I did not take the Dow trade. I'm all talked out for today. <laughs> okay, but like I said, I called it at 975 with the stop at 830 and target one is at 40,000 and void, like I said, we have caution area into 50 and now escaping to the 4080 zone. This is target, massive, massive target. And this is coming from Confluence right here. So at this point in time, what you do is you go to a smaller time frame, not quite the, uh, not the one minute, but the two minute. So you go on the two minute and what you want to do is you want to trail it at 50. Okay. You want to trail it at 50, obviously, because it's 80. Do you see how it went into 80 and now it's pulling back? It went to 84. Okay. Let me repost what I have posted today at 11.05. Okay, target 40,000, void to 40, uh, 0, 080, target intermediate, target cautionary area, I said, 40050. Zero, zero, now your trail stop is 50, okay? You go one down, you go one target down, now your trail stop is 50. So you can put your stop, raise your stop. I'm just putting an alert, I'm, obviously I'm not in the trade. Okay, but what you do is you place your stop right now here and you let it go because odds are that if the price is going to punch in a little bit higher, we just broke this massive level right here. And if we break, uh, if we break this um, uh, 20 SMA and if we close above it, we're going to have momentum to 290. Okay, to 290. So that would be to 290 right here. So at this point, you're sitting on cash. You're sitting on profits, I should say. You have a gorgeous trail stop. There was no reason for you to take literally partial profits into the 40s and into uh into the 40s, uh, uh into the 40,000 and into the uh, 0 050 because you went the price that sliced through those levels like butter. You can see here on the one minute, that's why you need to watch that screen that I showed you with all the time frames. okay? You wanna be a professional day trader, you need the equipment and you need the tools and you need the knowledge. You're not gonna wing it. If you wing it, you're just gonna get frustrated and you're gonna blow up your account. All right, so in this case, you the only thing, the only area where you take profit is that 80, right? So you should be half out at 80 with the trail stop on the other half at 50. Does that make sense? All right, great job, everybody. Uh, can you show your moving averages on Think or Swim? So the moving averages are, this is the 10 EMA, this is the 20 SMA. <clears throat> this is the 50. I don't, like I said, you're using it only if you're swing trading. You should have it on your daily. And then this is the 200 SMA, the red. All right. So let's see what other questions we have. What would uh, have been the GC target for short? Uh, the target for short would be around 75, 75 to 80. Uh, Alex took NASDAQ instead at 980. Proper stop for it. So at this point in time, you do the same thing that you do for um, that you that we did for why, why am I setting up another breakout over 85? Just FYI. Market is getting a little bit hotter right now. So um, let's go to the two minute here. And 120 would be your trail stop or very close to the 10 EMA. If you want to, uh, if I mean, you have really nice gains. Okay. So you either want to trail 120 
or you either want to trail the 10 EMA. The moment the price action is taking the doji high out above 133, you can place the stop tighter at 125. We teach trailing methods. So you're not going to be like, oh my God, I'm in the trade. What do I do now? <laughs> okay. So we teach that in our classes. So you trade stress-free, relaxed, you know, so have, you know, peace of mind. Of course, Alex, anytime. So I would trail, if I was Alex, if I was in NASDAQ, I would trail 120. Okay. So that would be my trail. Textbook, the textbook is saying, and the way I was taught is to either put it around the 10 EMA or you wait for the pullback, the rotation, and before you place the stop. Okay. Which in this market, I would not advise. This is not the market that uh, 20 years ago. Is there uh, even a time you place a hard stop in the market? Yeah, I do. But for example, if I want, let's say, if I want to take the trade here long, let's say, I'm in front of the computer. I mean, I'm here. It's a click. I could actually have, for example, uh, I, I could have a, a sell, uh, let's say a hard stop here because I don't want to get detected by these algos. I mean, imagine if we are, let's say 900, let's say a thousand people in the trading room and then everybody's buying one micro. They know where our stop is. That's my point. They know where our stop is. So I, I don't want to get, uh, okay. So how quick is this? For example, you have it somewhere at the bottom here. And I say, yeah, let's move this stop to 0 050. Is this like one second or what? That's that's my point with the hard stop. It's like maybe one nanosecond. Yeah. I mean, okay. All right, let me know. Any other questions? By the way, YM, um, right into this pivot, look at the fleecy morning, literally three hours of chop, three hours of chop. Uh, GC was the quick 1K. I don't know what your size was, Matt. I don't know how many contracts you have, but anyways. All right, guys, this is it for today. Um, let's uh, meet up tomorrow. I did not take any trades today. However, I called some trades here. I'm glad you guys took advantage of NASDAQ higher and YM higher. Um, YM, you could actually wait until this candle closes just now, and you could actually raise your stop, Alex, and everybody that is in, you can raise the stop a little bit uh, higher, uh, just move it into 138. All right. Uh, Vita, do you ever, have you ever traded? I've traded Forex for about five to six years. And then I switch to futures. You can still trade. Uh, you can still you could trade the dollar. You can trade the euro. You can trade um um. You can trade currency pairs, uh, or currencies. Um, on uh, with futures, uh, Ryan, I totally agree. Forex is for when I started trading forex. Forex was hot. Okay, now forex is garbage. Let me put it that way. Ryan said it nicely. It's a waste of time. <laughs> exactly. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Go where the money is. Just like when you're trading stocks, like when you're trading stocks, right? What do you do? You want to trade the hottest stocks. I mean, I got to say yesterday I was invited to uh, David organize to analyze your trade. And at one point I'm like, oh my God. Isn't anybody looking at what is in play today? They were like bottom picking, low volume stocks here and there, like 
very few traders that were looking at literally stocks that are on the move. Okay, let me show you something before we leave because I want to show you what's moving and what's shaking in the market. Right now, take a look at this stock right here. Crazy. <laughs> uh, all right, crazy. Uh, ALBT. Take a look at the volume. 217 million <laughs> was up today, 142%. It's still up 142%. This is crazy. Okay, this is literally crazy. But I just wanted to show you. Uh, okay, so here is some... Um, you know, some stuff, by the way, this is the stock that I'm in, Kava, uh, play whatever is in play, okay, play whatever is in play, that, that's my point, so for example, here, you have a nice, uh, you know, have a nice rotation, this one should go a little bit on the green side, um, okay, this is my scanner right here, okay, take a look at this stock, up 25%, this one was the one that I was telling you guys about, you know, and, and just go through the list and make sure that you have like a lot of volume going in. Okay. Volume rules. Exactly. Bradley. Exactly. Oh my gosh, Matt. Exactly. Go where the money is. Go where the money is. And Matt, because you were um still looking at, here it is. Uh, because you're still looking at GC. Okay, take a look at it. This is a sandwich down. So now you would be lowering your stock to 85. Okay, you would be lowering your stock to 85. And you would just continue to trail. I, I would actually do it on the two minute. I wouldn't have the patience to do it at this time. It's almost 12 o'clock. We're into doldrums. Yeah. All right. Do you guys have any other questions for me? at this point. What's, that's a good one. What's the minimum volume to look for a stock? I don't trade stock below one. I would say the cutoff would be 1 million shares a day. 1 million. Schwab is higher today. Micron is higher today. And go where the money is. Have a scanner, invest in a scanner, or uh, I have the stock swing trader where you all you do is, so I have probably five or six subscriptions and I share the information with you guys so you don't have to pay like $1,500, $2,000 um, a month. Like I, I really don't recommend anything. I'm not affiliated with anybody. Um, I like trade ideas, have been with them forever since they came on the market 20, I don't even know, 2003, maybe four, 2004, maybe something like that, 2005, I think. Um, so yeah, <laughs> can you believe that? They made a lot of money <laughs> off my membership. Um, yeah, Benzinga is, is so I I use Benzinga trade ideas. <coughs> That's what I use. Uh, I also have uh, Trend Spider, and I use the scanner there. I have multiple scanners there that I use. And I have a lot of charts that I watch. So displayed, displayed. Because if you don't see it, you're not going to, you, you, you can't take it. By the way, sandwiches, five-minute sandwiches again. Uh, so over 95, YM could have a go at it again. Uh, also, another sandwich coming into NASDAQ over uh, 156. You can see here the 125 trail stop in NASDAQ is in place right now. All right, so I'm really happy that you guys found the session useful. Thank you so much for the awesome comments. And um, I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, 
Um, awesome. Uh, Phil, we could do that tomorrow. It'd be awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the recording is going to come out later tonight for you guys. So hope you enjoyed the day today, even though we didn't, we had a very, very choppy morning, but we sat on our hands. We didn't lose anything. Can imagine the pain. <laughs> You're going to imagine the pain that a lot of traders felt. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye, everybody.